Our speaker this morning, State Representative Dean Cannon, quickly proved himself an astute leader after voters elected him to the legislature in 2004. His colleagues designated him a future Speaker of the House during his first term, and he's taken on leadership roles with such important issues as economic development and property taxes. Representative Cannon's district includes the University of Central Florida, and he has become a great friend to this university. Thanks to his persistence and leadership, along with the support of many other elected officials and community leaders, we've broken ground on our College of Medicine, <clears throat> which will begin training new doctors in the fall of 2009. The unique medical city that is developing at Lake Nona will strengthen our local and state economies and improve health care in our region. We also are thankful for Representative Cannon's support for Bright House Network Stadium and this new UCF arena. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Dean Cannon. President Hitt, uh, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, uh, family and friends of the graduating class of 2007, and most importantly uh, to you, the men and women whose graduations we celebrate today, I want to begin by thanking you. Uh, first time. Uh, this beautiful facility has been used for proceedings such as these. Uh, the first time I've ever given a commencement address to a school who's just won its conference football championship. And in fact, the first time I've ever given a commencement address, so bear with me. Uh, as a public servant and someone who has more than just a passing interest in political history, I have always endeavored to relate occasions like your graduation today to uh, either significant facts or significant people in the history of our country and the men and women who are instrumental in shaping it. And for today, I tried to look for some examples of how young people in their 20s and 30s uh, impacted our country in its early years. There was a young lawyer and legislator named Thomas Jefferson who was 33 years old when he essentially crafted the Declaration of Independence which is the brilliant document that is, frankly, the foundation for the most successful governmental experiment the world has ever known. Another friend of his, James Madison, was 25 years old when he served in the Virginia Constitutional Convention. And another colleague of theirs, Alexander Hamilton, as a military officer, both raised an artillery company, uh, led a group into several decisive battles, and served as an aide to General Washington during the nation's war for independence, all before he was 22. The path to our nation's independence, and indeed the path to our nation's very existence today, was paved over 200 years ago by the aspirations of young, idealistic, and ambitious people who desired freedom and self-governance. And they did it all without the help of Starbucks, Red Bull, or late-night pizza delivery. <laughs> the, the key point to take from that, though, is that across the pages of history, it's young people who have carried our nation's vision, uh, they've defended our safety and freedom, as Dr. Hitt mentioned a few moments ago. They've inspired cultural and political movements, and they've shaped the generation of Americans who come after them. And as great or as unusual uh, as that may now seem to you, you are now that group of accomplished and successful young people who will shape our state and our nation for both yours and the generations that will come after you. I ask you respectfully to trust me when I tell you that changing the world is not impossible. Uh, sometimes it happens more subtly than we'd all like, one day at a time, one person at a time, one issue at a time. Uh, and I ask you to make it a goal to leave your community and your state and your world a better place than when you found it. Now, I am a product of our state's state university system. Uh, I was in your shoes not too long ago, uh, and I wondered whether I could make a difference. And I'm here to tell you, not too many years later, uh, that the unequivocal answer to that is yes. Um, I now serve in the Florida House of Representatives with over 119 other members, and most of us came to Tallahassee with an inner desire or motivation to change our public policy for the better. I have found that we do not always create perfect policy. In fact, we never create perfect public policy. Uh, but we do endeavor to make things better, issue by issue, year by year, and area by area. And I cannot tell you that we have made society perfectly safe. I wish I could tell you we'd made our economy completely prosperous uh, or that our um, society is, is totally free from heartbreak or injustice. Uh, we have not done that. But I can tell you it has been an incredible privilege to make a difference in smaller ways, like helping President Hitt and his leadership to pursue the medical school here at the University of Central Florida, uh, to make our roads a little bit safer by increasing the penalties for running red lights, uh, making it a little bit easier for small businesses to flourish and prosper in our state, 
And I will tell you that there is nothing more satisfying than having a positive influence that will outlast you and those around you uh, in your state for the years to come. And I know that some of you are probably thinking the following thing. Uh, you may not want to lead people into military battles. You may not uh, develop a groundbreaking photonics theory. You may not uh, serve in public office. Frankly, I hope most of you are all much more smarter and successful than to make politics a career. But, but make no mistake, no matter what you do, you are going to play a critical role in the progress of our state and our nation. Uh, as Dr. Hitt mentioned, as an elected state representative, the University of Central Florida falls within the geographic district that I represent. And although I am not an alumnus of this great university, I consider UCF my adopted alma mater. I cannot tell you how proud or privileged I feel not only to have participated in those few issues that I've been able to make a difference in since I was first elected in 2004, uh, but I can also tell you, or I also cannot tell you how proud you can and you should be that the high value, and I mean that in terms of the academic value, the civic and social value, the athletic value, and literally the economic value of the degrees that you will receive today uh, continues to increase year by year. And you should be very proud and very grateful uh, that your hard work has paid you well thus far and will continue to pay you well into the future, I hope. As a graduate today, you really have the world literally at your fingertips. Uh, I'm frankly glad that I did not go to college in the era of the internet and YouTube or else my political future might have been different. Uh, but never before has access to information been so easy. You've got opportunities to shape your destinies and to access information that no generation before you has ever had. And the future generations will see your fingerprints on the choices that you make. So the questions that I want to leave you with are these. And I hope you've asked yourself these, but if you haven't, take a moment and do so now. What type of a state and a world do you intend to create for yourself and leave for your children? What type of society will future generations inherit from the work that you do or don't do? What values and standards will you set for them, higher or lower than those that you encountered when you entered the working world? And will you create for yourselves and leave for your children a life better than your parents' generation before you? I believe that you will, but I also imagine that I shouldn't throw out rhetorical questions like that without offering at least a few suggestions, ideas, or encouragements to you, uh, so I'm going to limit it to three. First, as you graduate, choose a community and make yourself a part of it. I hope you choose Florida. I hope you choose Central Florida. But put your roots down wherever you choose to go. And as you start your career and begin your family and pursue your goals, do it with passion, because literally your life depends on it. And your state depends on it. Florida needs those of you who are the best and the brightest to invest in our communities, to take ownership, and to apply what you've learned toward building a better Florida for tomorrow. After you choose your community, challenge yourself to stay civically or politically involved in it. That may mean something as uh, easy as voting in the next election. It may mean writing a letter to the editor of your local newspaper or getting involved in a political campaign or simply being knowledgeable about the issues that affect you and sharing that with your friends and colleagues. But do it because I have lived just long enough to see the impact of young men and women right here in Florida, graduates of our state university system, who stepped out and took a risk uh, and made a claim to improve the quality of life for themselves and their civilization, uh, and you can do the same thing. Third and finally, uh, be a risk taker. Step out and do something that will impact the people around you, but whatever you do, do so without worry about failure. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt gave a fantastic speech where he said, and I quote, far better it is to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to take rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much because they live in the gray twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. I tell you, please do not live in the gray twilight. Live in the bright sunshine of the sunshine state and never let risk or anxiety make your decisions for you or stop you from pursuing something that you believe in your heart is a worthy effort. As I close, I want to remind you of what a young Thomas Jefferson wrote when he was arguing for freedom uh, against British tyranny. He said, whenever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government. That, whenever things get so far wrong as to attract their notice, they can be relied on to set them right. To you graduates who are assembled here today, I know that your families and friends join me in saying, we trust you to do what's right. As you go forward and make your mark in the world, know that you have my and all your predecessors' fondest wishes and confident hopes that you will not only succeed but prosper. And thank you for the work that you've done to reach this milestone and for the credit that you are to the University of Central Florida and to your state, and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President.
Well, Dean, we thank you for a most thoughtful and eloquent uh, commencement address. Uh, let me just uh, say again how much we have appreciated the opportunity to work uh, with Representative Cannon in uh, building the consensus we needed uh, to achieve some uh, pretty important goals for the university, among them that medical college. Uh,